Good afternoon, this is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God, and we're going to continue in our series on revival, bringing revival to America, through my sharing of my book, Feed My People Joy, Kingdom Living for End Times, and <clears throat> we're continuing on the part about the gospel uh, being preached to the poor, which is the first thing that Jesus mentions when he talks about the gospel of the kingdom, and we're continuing on how um, poverty is a curse, and anybody who is poor is in bondage. They have no freedom. They're oppressed. Um, and uh, let's see, on Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law so that the blessings of Abraham would come upon us. And some, one of the um, scripture, one of the part that has to do with, um, one of the scriptures that has to do with the curse in Deuteronomy 28 is, um, Deuteronomy 28, 47, it says, uh, this is part of the curse. It says, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And that is the curse. It lists all the curse, all the sicknesses and diseases and everything not even listed in the book. That's the sickness and the disease. But it says, in hunger and in thirst and nakedness and in want of all things. So right there, um, you can see that poverty is a curse. And it was the curse that came upon the land. Uh, but Jesus redeemed us from that curse so that blessings of Abraham would come upon us. And the blessings of Abraham are, um, if you look in the Old Testament, he, God could not bless his people with spiritual things because they um, were not redeemed yet. He could only bless them with physical things, with uh, prosperity, increase of cattle in their herd, their garden, their gardening, and their, <laughs> their gardening, and their crops, and their... Uh, whatever job they did, hunting or whatever. Um, so, uh, poverty is a tool that's used by the enemy to destroy you. Poverty is from Satan, and God does not use Satan's tools to teach, humble, or get glory. So, poverty is a tool of the enemy. Get that straight in your head. It is not from God. God does not want you to be poor in any way. You are king's kids. You are God's kids, you have his DNA in you, you are created in his image. There is nothing poor about God. His streets are made out of gold. Okay? And he put more than enough on this earth for all of us. It doesn't matter what's happening to the econ economy. It doesn't matter what's happening to the world. It doesn't matter um, any of that stuff because the kingdom of God is within you and you live from inside out. You live by the God's way of doing things. And the way to get prosperous and rich is sowing and reaping and giving not by um, wor you, working hard is what you're supposed to do but that's your assignment that's not your way of making money the way of making money and prospering having all your needs met is to sow into ministries to sow into people's lives to sow into your church number one you have to tithe and that is not old covenant that is um, that is uh, the connection to the covenant blessing Okay, let's go over some more of this. Um, some of the scriptures that I want to point out to you are um, Proverbs 15:10. It says the destruction of the poor, uh, the destruction of the poor, is their poverty. Uh, also, this one is really, really good. Proverbs 14:20. The poor man is hated, even by his neighbors, but the rich man has many friends. Proverbs 19:4. Wealth makes many friends, but the poor is separated from his friends. Proverbs 19, 7, all the brothers of the poor hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? Proverbs 23, 7, the rich rule over the poor. That's very good. The rich rule over the poor. So it's not good to be poor. If you're poor, don't stay poor. Give your way out of it. Uh, if, if you need clothing, find something that's really good. Pray to God and say, who should I give it to? Give it to somebody and that he tells you to and then believe him to sow it to, to uh, give it back to you so you reap a harvest because the kingdom of God is all about sowing and reaping and words of your mouth which we'll go over in other chapters uh, um, I, I, Proverbs 28 15 says a wicked the wicked ruler rules over poor people um, God does not want us to be poor Okay. It even says here, Ecclesiastic 9.16, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Now, how can you have any authority and any influence when your neighbors hurt, hate you because you're poor, when um, your, your words are despised, when the rich, rich rule over you, and um, let's see, 
and, and the wicked rule over you. Poverty is not from God, okay? Uh, you need to learn about tithing and offering and reaping and sowing and multiplication. Other things that I have in my book here is uh, miracle, some scriptures on miracle, uh, supernatural restoration, giving to the poor, memorial giving, and our covenant. Those are all things that, uh, scriptures that you can look up uh, in this chapter that will tell you more about um, poverty not being good. Um, okay, and then let's take a look at this scripture here. Um, when Jesus gave, uh, well, when the, Jesus told about the parable, of the talents which are pieces of money he gave about this rich owner he gave one person five talents one person two talents or pieces of money and one person one talent and he told them that uh, he was going away and he was going to come back and collect what was his and he gave each one according to their ability well when he came back the person who had five gained five more and listen to it this is what God the master said Somebody was given five pieces of money, and when the master came back, they gained five more. So God said, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You're faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Now, that's totally the opposite of poverty. So you can see, to gain more, because everything that you have, the devil doesn't have. Okay? Uh, so you want to gain it for the kingdom. Okay, then look at the same thing happened with the one who had two. He gained two more, and he was praised. Now the servant that uh, had one says, I knew you reaped where you didn't sow. Okay, sowing and reaping, that's the law of the kingdom. Walking in love, sowing and reaping, loosening and binding, and agree two people agreeing and saying, uh, believing what you say. Those are the kingdom rules. Okay, he said, you wicked, wicked and slothful servant. He said, Thou art therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and at my coming I would have received what was mine with interest. In other words, he was looking to gain more. He said, Therefore take from him that piece of money and give it to him who has ten talents. The one who had five who gained five more, now he has eleven. And cast this servant out into the darkness. So, um, we are to gain we are to prosper and it's not just so we can sit in luxury and he wants us to be prosperous and blessed but he wants us to be a warehouse where things are coming in and going out and coming in and going out we're giving we're sowing we're we're uh, taking care of people who have needs and i find it one of the things i i find fascinating is that pro the prosperity gospel is one of the most fought after fought over parts of the gospel that is preached nowadays and it is part of the gospel the gospel is not just salvation the gospel is healing prosperity salvation and the whole thing it's bringing us back into a right relationship with God um, and, and it's fought but think of your parents uh, they want you to have better than them and they go to work so they can give to you and they're sad when they can't give you what you want and even what you need okay so our God is so much better than us and that's uh, it for that chapter that I'm going to share and talk about today um, and that was a gospel on uh, the gospel of the kingdom to the poor and my name is Robin Bremer and you're watching Walks with God and I'll talk to you tomorrow